hi, welcome to another edition of North Shore Journal. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski, and I have as my special guest today, Susie Lamont. Susie, welcome. Thank you. And Susie is with the Ward 2 Civic Association. That's correct. And we are going to be talking today about the GAR Hall here in Beverly. Uh, but before we, we start with that, and, uh, you're with the Ward 2 Civic Association, but you're also with the Beverly Historic District Commission. Did I say that right? Yes, you did. And that is a part of, of the it's a city commission, correct? That's right. And that is to be differentiated from the Beverly Historical Society, or as they're now called, Historic Beverly. That's a private historical organization with the, with the, on, on Cabot Street as they're building there, right? That's right. So, okay, but we're going to be talking about your work with the Ward 2 Civic Association and the uh, GAR Hall mm -hmm. here in uh, Beverly. So, uh, just so the, the folks get a, a little bit of a better idea, uh, uh, Susie, what does the Ward 2 Civic Association kind of, kind of do, and, and what's your mission? How many people are on that, uh, um, on that association? Well, we have a membership that meets once a month. Mm -hmm. We have approximately 60, 70 members. Um, about 20 come regularly to the meetings, and the rest correspond and get information through email, which is fine, too. Mm -hmm. um, we work on civic projects that are, are things that are going to improve our community. Um, being Ward 2, um, we are a neighborhood. We comprise almost all of the downtown. Downtown area, yeah. So we not only affect... Uh, just our neighborhood, but a lot of people use our neighborhood, so we're always interested in keeping our neighborhood accessible and friendly and lively for uh, for ourselves as well as the whole city. Right, and of course, you mentioned the projects that you do. It's safe to say that the that the G A R Hall project that we're going to talk about mm -hmm. today is sort of the big project here. This has been talked about for for literally uh, you know the last ten <laughs> or twenty years. I, yes. I, I think so. What what I, what I want to do just to set the, the tone here. I'm going to ask my camera person to zoom in on, zoom in on this. And this is a uh, Salem news from. Um, uh, not not too distant past, and this is kind of what the um, what the if you could zoom in on that a little little bit more, yeah, and that's kind of what the the G A R Hall looks like uh, today. You can see the the peeling paint to the and the boarded up windows, so it's not not in too good a, of shape, and that's what this whole issue is about, isn't it? That's correct. And now right now. Um, uh, the the city is the city still using it as part of the the building department do they still occupy that the yes. DJR hall the um, office of municipal inspections has their offices there okay. and they are a group of i believe 11 people okay and they occupy that space now after having been moved out of Memorial Middle School. Memorial Middle School, yes. The airport. <laughs> uh, there's a little transient. Um, and now they're in the GAR Hall temporarily. Right. And right. the hope for them is that their new offices will become part of the new police station building. Yeah, that, that's been talked about for a long time as well, hasn't Indeed. it? Indeed. And, and just so people realize the location, this is Dane Street, which is, uh, and it's between Knowlton and Essex Street, and it's right next to the Dane Street Church, mm -hmm. correct? It's right right there. And, and, be, and the Memorial Methodist Church. Right, okay. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about the, the history of, of the GAR Hall. And uh, it was built, I believe, in 1863 yes. as a Baptist chapel. Is that uh, the, according to the research I've done? That's correct. It was actually the fifth vestry <laughs> yeah. of the first Calvinistic Baptist church, which we know today as the first Baptist church. Right. And right. yes, that was the primary function as a chapel. Yeah. And, of course, it was, it's been used in a lot of different um, uh, uh, Uses it was it was a chapel. Uh, it was it was a high school for a while. Mm -hmm. The Beverly High School for yeah, five years. For five years, and then for many years, uh, and that's I think primarily where it, it got its name, the GAR Hall. It was used by the Civil War veterans as a kind of a meeting place. And just so our audience is, is aware, the the GAR stands for Grand Army of the Republic. Correct. That's correct. 
and according to my research, they were not formed until after the Civil War in, in 1866, mm -hmm. and this was a, a fraternal organization that that was for the for the the use uh, uh, and meeting of Civil War veterans. Yep. And of course, the hall was built in 1863, so it was not built originally as the GAR hall. No, it but, was not. Yeah. And uh, going back one more step from GAR, yeah. the first group of veterans who used that building were the Beverly Light Infantry Company, who used it for an army, and they were veterans from the War of 1812. 1812. So they used that as an armory, is what you. That's yeah, correct. They, okay, from 1812, and it was it was originally on uh, Cabot Street mm -hmm. when it was first built, and we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, about the movement. Uh, but I'd like to. Uh, I have a series of pictures that you mm -hmm. sent me, some uh, uh, some older historical pictures, sure. and I'd like you to I'd like our our. Um, uh, our control room to kind of put these up in the order we have them queued up there. And I'd like you to talk a little bit as these come up, Susie. So th this is a, a recent picture, or it's a little bit older than the one that maybe that I showed initially. But it tell it, this is what its current condition is, or what it's looked like for the last, what, 10 or 12 years? No, that's actually how it looked last week. Oh, okay. So this is what the new... This is, con so, so it's tell us under construction right now. Okay. So, and we're going to be talking about that a little bit more, that, that mm -hmm. the construction project is alive and it's, it's underway Very right much. now. Very much. This okay. looks like a wreck but it's in progress <laughs> okay all right and let's take a look at the at the next photo and now this is um, tell us about that uh, um, originally that circle enclosed a rose window right so it was a decorative uh, framing with glass that light would shine through and that also is being repaired and restored um, to be returned right. and to we'll that see, spot. We'll see in the in the future pictures yep. uh, in this series where that how that looks. So that rose window is no longer. There's nothing left. I mean, th th that that isn't around anymore. Is that Actually, correct? Actually, fragments were found in the attic of that. Ah, okay. And will be those fragments are going to be used to recreate the exact size ah, okay um, so it'll be a, it'll be a perfect match of what it once was but there was actually quite a bit left of it yeah and if you put that back up oh or no we can, we can see this one so there's the original tell us about this photo here can you date the, this roughly i can it's it's approximately 1905 okay and this would have been when the veterans groups the uh, uh beverly light infantry was using it this was represents when the bay the bay window was added on um, I guess we haven't seen a picture yet without the bay but 1905 this is the era to which uh, the building will be currently restored so pretty much as you see it there is how you're going to see it in the near future the on near Dane future. Street right and you can see above the rose window it's post 89 I believe that's correct G A R so post 89 Grand Army of the Republic. So this is this was used very right. regularly by the folks. Uh, which it, which is the John H. Chipman post. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure your viewers will know that. Yes. And I think what you were referring to earlier, if we look at the next uh, photo, uh, so, okay, so tell us what, what was the occasion for, for all the bunting and the flags okay. and everything there? Yeah, this is in 1902. Um, you can barely see underneath the where the door is that that bay window is not there right um, so this was decorated for old home week in 1902 which is today what we know as beverly homecoming okay so the mayor had asked um, all the buildings on cabot street to be decorated with bunting and uh, this is sort of an iconic picture that came out of it but it gives us a good show of what the building looked like at the early turn of the century uh, before the bay window was added. Right. And I think the next photo, I think, even goes back a little bit further. It does. Yeah, we're kind of going uh, back we're and forth. We're going back, back in time. And it almost looks like it's a brick building there, but it is not a brick building. But it, it kind of, when you look at that, you, it, it looks like it's a brick building, but it, it, it is It does. Not. It's actually clabbered siding, yeah. and it's painted dark. Yeah. Um, if you could zoom in with a magnifying glass, you, you'd be able to see the uh, horizontal right. uh, 
boards, but that was when it was a high school, so this would be in the 18th, early 1870s. Okay, so there are no, no cars on the streets yet, so if, if you saw somebody going by there, it would be a horse-drawn buggy uh, of some, of yeah, some sort. Yeah, that and road of course would be the, dirt. <laughs> right, and of course, no bay windows, that was, that was added added layer, later, and we're going to be talking later about the construction, the, the very unique uh, narrow windows on either side mm -hmm. of the door, how, how you're working now to uh, replicate that in the, in the new renovation. Um, okay, and let's take a look at the next one, and this is a very, tell us about this occasion, why the big crowds here, Susie? Oh, this was a big, big day here in Beverly. Um, 1910, this is, and you can see him just maybe on the left third, standing up, President mm -hmm. Taft. Yeah, the black figure there in the, the, in the white. Yeah, the black figure under the yeah. solid white yeah, awning. Yeah, the big, big, yeah, uh-huh. Um, and he, came, he was in town on this occasion for the laying of the cornerstone for the building of the YMCA. Right. And um, what year would this have been? This would be 1910. 1910. And you can see St. Mary's Church on the far right yeah and you can see across the street from it the GAR hall yeah so I want to uh, point out to our viewers what you just said that the building on the extreme right there is is st. Mary's Church so its original location was on Cabot Street almost exactly opposite st. Mary's Church and you can see the way it looked there and it looks like Maybe the bay windows were already installed yep, there. Yeah, uh, they are installed. So, um, 248 and a half Cabot Street was its address, mm -hmm. and that's now where Beverly Bank is, mm -hmm. otherwise known as former Beverly Cooperative Bank. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let's let's take a look at the next um, uh, the next. Now, this is an. I think this is really an. Um, um, artist conception, is it not? That's or is this correct. A, yeah, and tell us what we're looking at here. Uh, this is a rendering of what the interior space on the first floor it will look like after the interior renovations are done. Um, there is a small stage platform up in the front, and that's still there. But the ceiling has been dropped about eight feet currently. Mm -hmm. So that arch over the woman's head is only partially visible at the moment if you were to go in oh, okay. to the inspection office. Okay. And look, you just see those two ends. Okay, so, so this is what it's going to look like. Right now, that ceiling you're saying is down near the top of that arch. Yeah, just over her head nearly. Okay. Um, so, so the ceiling will be, the drop ceiling rather, will be removed. Removed, yeah. And that ceiling will be restored. The original tall windows on the side are going to be put back in. And this is an idea of what the space and the interior could be used for, for assembly purposes, for meetings, or the chairs could be removed for gallery shows, or a function, or a performance. Um, it's really intended to be a flexible space that could you be used by the community for a variety of purposes. Right. And I think the next, the next picture is very interesting. This is what you talked about before. So tell us what's going on here, Susie. So those are the windows from the front facade facing Dane Street right now that they've been taken out and <laughs> currently replaced with the plywood. Right, that's what we saw in that earlier yes. photo, okay. <laughs> so these have gone to a woodworking shop and this gentleman who is an expert is busy working on repairing them. Okay. He will 100% uh, repair the two front windows, mm -hmm. and then he'll take the measurements and create um, n new knives to cut moldings to recreate the windows on the side because they're the same. Okay. So we're getting new in-kind replica windows for the sides of the building, and then the original, which you see here, front two windows will be repaired and re put back. Okay, so so the front two are going to be the original windows, but renovated. Yes. But the side ones will be look like original windows, but they will actually be replicas of, That's of the of the That's uh, of the original ones. And I think we have one more photo. Is this visible? I don't know if we, it's a kind of a very light. Let's oh. see. Oh, this is. Uh, tell us about that. This looks like a drawing, a brand new drawing. Is that correct? Yeah, this is a drawing of just for example the scope of work for the restoration on the front facade, and uh, 
let's see. So it's, it's for the construction team to look at and say, okay, this is the plan. These flanks are going to be restored. These windows will be restored to these specifications. This will be uh, repainted. Um, it's hard to read even with a magnifying glass. Yep. Um, so it just gives an idea of the, step, the, the many steps just right. for improving this facade. Um, back to the 1905 appearance. Right, right. Now, uh, tell us. Um, we, we joked a little bit earlier how this, uh, mm -hmm. the the plans or the or the thinking of renovating the GRR Hall has been kind of kicked around and tossed around for decades and decades. So, how how long has the Ward Two uh, Civic Association been thinking about this or actively <laughs> planning this? Uh, um, 2014. Uh, I remember. Well, that's, that's, that's only five <laughs> years ago. <laughs> no, which I'm told this is a fast-moving project. Uh -huh. It feels slow to me. Um, in 2014, we, as a civic association, were having trouble booking the library as a meeting space. And so we were looking around for alternate sites that were within our ward that mm -hmm. would be easy for us to meet in. And the GR Hall was a suggestion put on the table. And uh, it turned out we were allowed to use it. And we used a couple times and we thought, geez, this building needs some love. And we need a neat meeting place. This would be a very good fit and would fit in nicely with um, contributing to the community and having a nice project that would make a difference. And so we sort of adopted this project um, to put forward to the city and the mayor gave his nod of approval, and we've been partnering with them on it since. Yeah, and as we said, it has a, it has great historical significance in in, in the Absolutely. city. And now, was there ever a time uh, where, um, in the recent past, where it was just not used for anything? It was just just there, barren and empty, or or has it always been somebody in there? Not to the best of my knowledge, um, before twenty. Well, even during 2014, it was being used by other groups. The veterans were still meeting there. There was a church that was using the space, a small church. Um, as far as I know, it was still available. The recreation department had classes they offered in there. Okay. Through the 50s, the 60s, to the 90s, the senior okay. center operated out of that building. Oh, before they were at the current location on Cabot Street? Uh, uh, or, um, uh, up by the hospital, uh, Colon Street. Colon Street, I'm sorry, yeah. That's right. Yeah. So it's always been in use as a community meeting space in some form or its city recreation department. Yeah. It's always been available to the community to use. Yeah. And, and it is it is city city property, right? It's city owned. Absolutely, uh, city yes. owned property. Yes. Now, um, let, let's talk now about the hard facts of, of what, we're, what we're looking at <laughs> yes. here. Um, now, you, you had, a, I think when you guys started looking at this, uh, by you guys I mean the Ward 2 Civic right. Association, you, you hired an architectural firm and hence the drawings we looked at a little bit earlier right. to kind of look at it and put forth sort of a proposal architectural and then looked at what kind of construction or what, what, what would need to be done to, yes. to make this happen. So and, yes. tell us about that. Yeah, we, uh, we worked with the city to apply for funding for a feasibility study and an architectural analysis and that was to provide a look at a, a close look at what the existing building was what condition it was in what it needed and the feasibility part of what could it be in the future how could it serve the community in a better way than it is now and what were the steps be to get it to that point and so that was conducted, and that returned a plan mm -hmm. of uh, one, excuse me, $2.5 million restoration plan. <laughs> yeah, not, not inexpensive. No. <laughs> so uh, uh, the, um, uh, the, the current plan as it stands now, you're, you're going to do that in phases, I think. And I think, the, That's right. I think what you are planning to do is restore the outside sort of to, to show the public what, what it can look like That's and right. then hopefully uh, muster more interest in it and more funding for, for the project. Is Absolutely. That, is that correct? Yeah. Um, also, be working on the exterior allows uh, the project not to interrupt 
the inspectional services yeah. um, department okay. so, so, ongoings while they're in there. Right. So but that can be done without interfering with Eventually they're going to have to move again, right? They will, So, so yes. they never get their business cards printed up with an address, do they? <laughs> <laughs> because they've been I don't know. Five, five different places <laughs> in the last 10 years. Yeah. Uh, and now, uh, as far as funding is concerned, I know that, that uh, you have made a grant uh, or, or a proposal to the uh, the CPA funding, which is the Community Preservation mm -hmm. Act, which Beverly passed a number of years ago, That's right. which uh, has a slight surtax on property taxes, and this money then is is uh, somehow augmented, either doubled or some proportion of it is, is gotten from the state, but mm -hmm. it has to be used for very specific purposes That's like correct. historic restoration or conservation or whatever. Yes. So you have gotten some uh, CPA money, is yep. that correct? CPA has been very generous to our project. Project. Yeah. Um, they, Main, Main Streets. Uh, Main Streets has given a facade improvement grant. Okay. Towards the facade right. improvements. Right. Um, and I know you also wrote a grant to like a private uh, placement. A private grant. company, um, Burns Matic, which they make the blue blow torches. You might be familiar with. Yeah. Uh, we entered a contest. And how did that turn out? It turned out we were in the top ten, so we won a prize of fifteen. Hundred dollars. <laughs> okay. Fifteen hundred. Yeah, fifteen hundred dollars, yeah. yeah. which went towards that, and uh, we were able to secure, with the help of Jerry Parasella and Joan Lovely, a fifty thousand dollars state grant. Right. Um, and this is specifically earmarked uh, for this project. So I think this was last year, right? It was last year. In fact, the yeah. earmark is already spent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, what? What? Uh, right now, you've got you've got work crews in there right now. Mm -hmm. And, but they're working mainly on on the outside, as we mainly talk. yes. I mean, they need to go inside to remove the windows and uh, you know things like you know the inside part of the exterior. Yeah. But mostly outside. Yeah. And now, how long how long are you anticipating that that part of the project will will take the improve you know the the outside facade the outside? I'm expecting about three more months. Oh, I, that that's kind of yeah. quick. I, I expected so, that. Yeah. To so right it. now they're removing the uh, cedar shingles, and because it will be restored to clapboards underneath, and uh, and the windows are being made as we saw in the pictures. Right. So as soon as the windows are done being made, um, we're replacing the front doors. The clapboard siding will either be repaired or replaced depending on the condition. Um, we expect that in the next month to just go gangbusters. They're build, rebuilding the rose window. So it'll be a couple of months before that gets put back. And then painting, mm -hmm. which we'll need to wait till the spring anyway. And those two things should coincide. Yeah. Now, we, you mentioned the figure 2.5 million. Mm -hmm. But the, the numbers kind of that we've been talking about from, from the state and CPA funding, we're, we're talking about 50,000 here, 100,000 mm -hmm. here. Wh where do you expect the 2.5 million will, will come from? Have you got that all allocated, or you still have some no. fundraising to do? There's a lot of fundraising to do. We've only um, secured the first phase and basically a half. Mm -hmm. um, so about $600,000 we've secured for it. And, and to be determined yeah. where we're going to go for the money, we're always seeking grants. Um, always, that's something that we need to work more on with the city about what the strategy is for um, yeah. obtaining the money. Yeah. Now, the city, uh, might you expect that the city would, uh, as part, in part of their budget, would, would infuse some, uh, some capital into this project? Yeah. And they have, they, they have done that, and they certainly contribute their staffing and time to the right. project. Yeah. Um, but that is at the discretion of... <laughs> The city, I cannot speak for them. <laughs> and so, so what, what, is, what is your vision and what, what should the, the people of Beverly, what should we expect as like the vision for the GAR Hall here for, for the future? You alluded to it a little bit before. Tell us about that. Um, I see it as a public space that contributes um, to the new cultural district. Beverly Cultural District is right on the edge. It's across from the Cabot Theater. It can be a smaller venue for, uh, let's say, if there was a film festival, you could have a larger film shown at the Cabot, 
and a smaller film shown across the street at the GAR. You could do gallery shows for artists. You can have community meetings. Of course, the veterans are top of the list of people we want to be able to continue to use it as a meeting space. Mm -hmm. um, classes, you name it, uh, events. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, the, the, the Grand Army of the, of the Republic, obviously there's no more Civil War soldiers <laughs> Sadly, uh, no. <laughs> alive. Is that, is that still, uh, is there, are there still other uh, GAR halls or buildings around the country that you, that you know of? That, uh, well, a very fine example of a GAR hall is in Lynn. Yeah. And if you ever get a chance to get to Lynn, it's right downtown. It is probably four stories tall. It is... A, an amazing example of the of a GAR hall. There are a few out. There are more than a few out there. Not that's the only one I can think of <laughs> locally. Locally. Yeah. Now, do you have a, a, a kind of a, a date out there in the future that you might expect to be kind of like a grand reopening where uh, everything will be done, or is it just not 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 enough information to be able to tell? Not enough information. Um, never as soon as I think it should be. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but like we talked earlier, the police station is an important piece of this puzzle because um, the addition of that as municipal space is going to open up opportunities for moving some of the government offices around. So we're looking at maybe five years to see that and then um, I, I have no idea. <laughs> so watch for the police station and when you see that go up, <laughs> ask me again. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Well, with, with that, I, I see that our, our time is almost up. So, uh, Susie, thank you uh, very much for that. It's been very informative. And uh, I'd like to remind our audience that uh, uh, my guest has been Susie Lamont from the Ward 2 uh, Civic Association here in Beverly. And we've been talking about the renovation of the GAR Hall here in Beverly. And I'd like to remind our viewers that you've been watching North Shore Journal. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski, and we'll see you next time.